reaction coming in from the Jammu and Kashmir LG Manoj Sinha first response towards the PDP's claim uh, Mehboob Mufti's claim that she is being kept under house arrest and uh, that's been rubbish listen in ye puri tarah se niradhar hai pure Jammu Kashmir mein nahi kisi ko house arrest kiya gaya hai nahi kis nahi kisi ko giraftari nahi kisi ki giraftari ki gayi और ये भ्रामक अफवाह फैलाने की कोशिश है मैं बड़ी जिम्मेदारी से बात कर रहा हूं कि पूरे जम्मू कश्मीर में राजनीतिक कारणों से किसी को न गिरफ्तार किया गया है न हाउस अरेस्ट किया गया है Congress is saying we'll wait for the verdict before we even react. Manikam Tagore has said we'll wait, produce the judgment, and then thereafter react. Uh, meanwhile, the BJP MPs are now gathering outside uh, the statue to say corruption ki dukan on uh, the amount of money that's been now still being counted at a Congress MP's residence uh, in uh, Jharkhand, and that's where the questions are being raised around him: how much money and how is it uh, so much? Why even as the Congress distances itself, corruption ki dukan is trending 370 somewhere. Rahul Shiv Shankar. Everyone believes it's going to be about what the court decides should be the road going ahead, not about those who want to continue to look back and call back history. You know that obviously is a point that will come up, but I think that's the lesser point, quite frankly, because mm. that is in the prerogative, really, of a large number of other agencies. Even the government can't jump to deciding when elections should take place. That's with the EC to decide. Also, of course, there is the largest security. You know, it's a very mm. sensitive border state, and we continue to forget that. So there is a security dimension to this entire issue, and I can tell you that the Supreme Court will also be considering all of this. So I don't think that there is going to be any sort of um, order that will deny any of these authorities a final say in determining. I think there will be a blank assertion. Of the fact that status must be restored, the democratic process, the electoral process, not the democratic process, the electoral process must get underway forthwith as soon as conditions allow. I think that's the kind of general thrust. But coming back today is when, going when to be historic. When the court advised the governor, uh, government, that all of the state of Jammu and Kashmir should be brought together. Yeah, of course. I mean, no one is that, denying that. No one is denying statement. that, and I think that I will do, be I don't a big think... statement when I say all of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Yes, of course. But you see, there are certain realities which we can't overlook. The mm. court might, you know, obviously, all Indians would love POK to be reunited with India, and of course, Axi Chin and all of that. But those are realities that I don't think even a court can today uh, change on the ground. <laughs> you know, mm. it comes to there are a lot of known unknowns. So. You know that, from a grander sort of you know pronouncement, uh, hmm. and obviously a reaffirmation of India's territorial integrity and sovereignty. That sentiment remains, and hmm. that should be reiterated at every possible moment in every platform. But, but as you peruse the details, you're somebody who's deep dive, uh, dived into it, and we are just standing by for the verdict. So we'll keep those pictures from the courtroom on the screen along with our guests. But Rao Shiv Shankar, lead this conversation with our guests on whether or not the methodology pursued has been totally legal. There is no illegality in the methodology pursued by the government in 2019 to abrogate 370. Well, it all will come down to what the court believes. Uh, and which side it actually decides to favor? I think you know you yourself, Anand, mm. have sort of stated on that uh, big wall behind you the arguments, and I mm. think there are two or three things that we need to really look at very closely. I think it was point three or four you mentioned in the first set of graphics that you brought out mm. the basic structure doctrine. Now the basic structure doctrine also informs us all, and and I I, I would like to bring in the. Uh, the lawyers amongst us, especially the gentlemen um, to our left, yeah, and Ashutosh Srivastava. Ashutosh, Srivastava. Ashutosh, you and know, Sanjay the Rana. basic structure can be a guiding light, and it must be a guiding light, but it must apply equally to the fact that Article 370 was in itself violative of the basic structure that guarantees us certain basic rights. Rights were denied. Uh, to a huge section of people there. And uh, whether it was the Valmikis, whether it was Hindu refugees freeing the rapacity of religious persecution in Pakistan, whether it was people who decided to marry out of the state, uh, their children 
a number of their yes. rights were proscribed. So obviously the Supreme yes, Court yes. will have to look at this. Yes, go ahead, please. Yes, yes, yeah, that's absolutely correct. And I'm sure uh, not only the legality, but also the interest of the citizens of this country and the people staying in Jammu and Kashmir, their interest will also be taken care of by the Supreme Court because it will also see in any judgment, the court also goes uh, to to uh, beyond it's uh, this thing where they consider the the you know the interest of the people how it has to be protected how what will be better for them the public opinion also forms uh, a, you know a very strong kind of a decision making process while delivering such kind of a judgment which has to see the democratic system the legality the future of the country the interest of the people and the and the citizens of the uh, country and also the equality between all the citizens have also to be restored and as you rightly said that 370 itself was violative of the uh, fundamental rights uh, be, being given by the same constitution to all the citizens of this country see why a lot of people you know, who are challenging of, this a lot of lot yes. of people who are challenging this ashutosh and i'm bringing in sanjay rana and farooq renju shah on this would say all these arguments are acceptable 370 was wrong it was denying people rights 35a was a footnote and it was again a, a blot on our constitution you couldn't have two separate constitutions the jammu and kashmir high court see. couldn't be reinterpreting a different penal code altogether and be uh, a different constitution. But Sanjay Rana, it is about if this has to go, but how was it sent away? How was it abrogated? Was it done fairly in accordance with the provisions of our constitution? There is some movement there uh, among the benches. All the, all the lawyers are still seated. As soon as the judges walk in, the, the hearing will, be, uh, will start shortly. Let's just go full frame to those visuals if we can uh, before we come back to the conversation and let's see what's happening. Uh, the verdict is shortly. There you go. The five judges' benches are still uh, empty at this point. They should all be walking in and taking their position. The centre chair will be presided. That will be the Chief Justice of Stair, Justice T.Y. Chandrachur, leading this five-judge bench. That uh, includes Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul and uh, uh, others. Uh, we, but Sanjay Rana, uh, 